Picture this, you go out to run an interval workout and the pacing says, you should go out at your VO2 max pace for four minutes, take a two minute rest and repeat that five times. Questions swirl around your head, like is it your goal 5K pace or your current 5K fitness? When was the last time you ran a 5K? This episode is a combo where I'll show you how to use a really cool, simple and free tool and also explain VO2 max with the help of pro run coach and sports scientist, Mike Trees at the end of all this. Think of it as your VO2 max ultimate toolkit of sorts. Stay on board as you'll learn what the VDOT calculator is, why it's important and how to use it, example of how I would use it, traps to avoid the difference between a VO2 max workouts, VO2 max and VO2, they are different, what to do with all of this, why the aerobic engine is so damn important, a great car analogy of aerobic versus anaerobic systems, energy systems, and so much more. But before we get into it, who am I and what do you get from all this? I am Darren, a sub three hour marathoner and 10 hour Ironman finisher. And this is the 1% better runner. Since 2012, I've been researching, experimenting and talking to experts on how to get 1% better in my training, racing and life to make it easier for you to learn from me and do all of this yourself and get all the gains. Let's get into the episode. What is it? The VDOT calculator is an online tool that helps runners determine their ideal training paces. Inputting a recent race time provides precise paces for different workouts, and they'll spit out your easy run pace, tempo runs, and interval paces. Dr. Jack Daniels, the founder of VO2 Max Measurement for Aerobic Fitness, created this without any relation to whiskey. Why is it all important? When most people step into interval work, I think and I know based on experience, they really go into it blind. They usually don't test to determine their pace, heart rate, or if you have a power meter, power zones. This means that they can be even 10 to 20 seconds off their pacing per minute per mile or minute per kilometer, and they may not get the full benefit from the workout, either running it too slow or running it too fast. I use this a lot to figure out a rough estimate of my own running fitness, or when I'm coaching someone, it helps understand where the interval paces should be, their race paces, etc. This means fewer tests early on, but dialing in a range of, of pacing for specific runs, such as long runs, interval sessions, and easy runs. It also helps me develop a pretty accurate race day strategy based on several factors from putting it into this calculator. How to use it? It's very straightforward, but I'll do a quick walkthrough. You must have done a race or time trial over the last four to six weeks and plug that in, plug that into the calculator. Yes, you'll need to suffer for at least three kilometers, two miles, but preferably five kilometers, 3.1 miles, which gives better data if you're doing longer distances like half marathons, marathons is what you're trying to do ultimately. Future Darren here. So while editing this, I realized that to really make this stick for you, I should have some sort of interactive thing that you download. So I created a free, quick, and easy cheat sheet, checklist, and 30-day 1% better plan so that you can use the VDOT calculator and improve your VO2 max. See the show notes or video description below to download that. First step, race or time trial. Participate in a race or perform a time trial to get a recent performance time, preferably in the last four to six weeks. Step two, input data into the race distance and time into the VDOT calculator. Step three, output data. It will give you three different data sets, race paces, training, and equivalent. Number four, data sets defined. Part A, race paces. They, they give you estimated times for different distances depending on your current fitness. Use these predictions to set realistic goals for your next race. B, training paces. These tell you how fast to run for various workouts, such as easy runs, tempo runs, and intervals, as I said earlier. Stick to these paces to get the most out of your training. Please do not vary them. I promise they are usually very, very correct. I'll talk to why they can be off. And C, equivalent. Shows how your performance at one distance compares to others. Use this to see how you likely perform in races you have yet to try. Number five, don't be a noob. Most new people on this to the site look at race paces only. You are not a noob. I have given you this knowledge bomb, or this whole thing, this episode, so that you can step your run game way up. Six, review paces. Analyze the updated training paces provided by the calculator. Obviously, review them. Get, get friendly with them. Seven, adjust training. Modify your training plan to incorporate the new paces, ensuring your workouts remain effective and appropriate for your current fitness level. Traps to avoid. If you are unfit in estimating things, the numbers will probably be off. You need to do a test time trial or race at 85 to 90% effort 
and you will have to suffer. Ideally, you have had four to six weeks of base and then do the test. After not doing anything for five months, coming into this will give you wrong predictions. So don't give it bad data. It will spit out bad data and predictions and insights. Mostly science and precision. Take this with a grain of salt as it's mainly showing you your potential. You may be genetically predisposed to being more aerobically or anaerobically fit. I have more anaerobic fast twitch fibers, so that means I do more of the speed stuff. And based on my one mile time trial that I gave it, which again, I said it's a bit too short, but I gave it to it, a four minutes, 54 seconds, I should run a two hour, 20 minute marathon. That is not happening unless I put in a few years of building up crazy amounts of base and tempo runs and just a lot, a lot of miles and volume and kilometers to get marathon ready. I would also need to slowly get my body ready for the load that it would take to run that fast for that long and build up my chassis, tendons, ligaments, connective tissue, all that stuff. It would just take time and a lot of effort. This algorithm is not taking that into account. Final thoughts. Besides the above caveats, I found it a great resource to figure things out. It's also nice to play, I wish, <laughs> and see what types of intervals you may need to run in training to get a specific race time. Also, check out his book, Jack Daniel's book on VO2 Max, which explains all this VO2 Max stuff very, very well and a lot of science detail if you're into that. The VDOT score is a score similar to your VO2 Max if you were lab tested. I had the lab test done a few years back in my mid-30s. And I don't see a need to get it retested because I just don't need it. Most people don't need to get lab tested as is calculated in many other algorithms from other fitness watches, give you a range and go up and down, which is fine for amateur runners. Up next, Mike Trees and I will help define VO2 max, how to improve it and a few other tactics to help you run your best in races and training and all that stuff. This is a summary of the longer episode, so make sure to click below if you want to listen to the full episode or just let the video keep going and you'll learn a whole bunch about VO2 Max. Thanks for watching. So the oxygen helps us burn the fuel. Then the blood delivers it to the muscles. And the heart is the engine pumping to the muscles. So the bigger and stronger the heart, the more oxygen and more carbohydrates we deliver to the muscles. Aerobic exercise increases the size of the heart so that it can supply more blood, more fuel, and more oxygen to the muscles. So if we can supply more blood and more oxygen to the muscles with a lower, easier heart rate, we can go faster as we keep building the heart rate up, we can go faster and faster. You explained it way better than me and a whole lot of points that I did not bring up as usual. Um, so this is why we make a, a good team. The car needs the fuel to power the wheels. So the fuel is the carbohydrates and the fat. Uh, in essence, if we're running a marathon, uh, and I know we, we've discussed this and it's a big contentious topic, it's probably more carbohydrates than fats that we need. So the bigger the engine, the more power it can get the wheels. So if our VO2 max is bigger, we've just basically taken the car engine from a, a 1.6 litre to a 3 litre engine. So that's what we're trying to do with the VO2. We're trying to improve it so we can get more oxygen to the muscles. The trouble is, the bigger the car, the bigger the engine, the heavier the car is. So the heavier the car is, it takes more power to get that car to work. That's why it's always expressed as a percentage of, of body weight. Because if it's not in relation to body weight, it, it's meaningless. Because we're running a marathon, we have to carry our bodies the whole way down. This is why we have this problem with runners always trying to be lighter, because they've realized that their VO2 max will go up. The lungs are still the same, the ability to get oxygen, the muscles is the same, but the lighter body uh, allows them to go faster. And I also found out that 400s, uh, 10 by 12 by 16 by 400s. That, that's my favorite, two minutes. Yeah. Uh, 80 seconds with 40 rest and just do the two minute circles. I like the rhythm of it and how you keep building and in the middle, you just get into this great groove. I get into a flow state on that that workout <laughs> particularly, but I, I found out that that was a VO2 max workout too. Um, and I mm. was like, oh, I did not, I thought that was an interval workout. Yeah, it, it's an interval workout, but it's developing a VO2 max. Whereas if I was just doing 40 second sprints all out and then having five minutes off, that's probably not going to develop my VO2 max system. And if I was doing 10 minutes, which would be more of a tempo run, if I was doing 10 minutes, you know, at my marathon, half marathon pacing, 10K pacing, that probably wouldn't develop my VO2 max as well as a VO2 max specific workout.
a, just a traditional VO2 max workout is an interval three to five, five and a half minutes at around my 5K pace-ish current, if I know that one, if I've done some time trials, uh, with a three minute rest and two and a half to three minute rest. The reason being you want to get your heart rate lower so that you don't build up lactate, lactate because this is not a tempo run. This is not a lactate test. There's been a lot of studies that I've read and I've actually done it myself where you can actually be on the lower end. So it's a range and you can still get benefits, which is beautiful. You need to get your heart rate up to this certain amount and Z4 will be dependent for a lot of different people um, for a certain amount of time. For me, I like to do it early in my training blocks to get ready for race specific work. And I really like four to six weeks seems to be about the time when most studies have said that you don't get any more benefits. You are, this is genetic. Your VO2 max is genetic. You can work on it, but you can't increase it that much more. And there's other ways of increasing other things like your lactate threshold and your running economy that actually give you bigger bangs for your buck. When we do a VO2 max workout, what we're saying is we're trying to work at a pace which is carrying the, our maximum amount of oxygen to the muscles per minute that we can cope with. Beyond that, we can't cope with it. So we have to then use the anaerobic system to add supplementary benefit. Sorry, that is different than a Moffatone run though. So this is where I got confused. VO2 max pace, it's the maximum amount of fuel and oxygen we can supply the muscles. We are creating lactic acid, but we're absorbing it at a pace as well. So we're not going into any depth. With the Moffatone idea of maximum aerobic, he's trying to go to pace where we're not even building up lactate at all. He's working at what we call the fat burning, carbohydrate, glycogen burning threshold. So we're trying to burn as much fat for fuel as we can on Moffatone threshold. With the VO2 max, it's pure carbs we're burning. I mean, it will be going on, but as a source, contribution is minimal. But we can go on a heck of a lot longer using fat for fuel than carbs. So VO2 max, which the two is a number, uh, maximum volume of oxygen. It's your body using your aerobic engine, the oxygen, to the point where it then tips over and is about to then start using glycogen for the majority of the energy, which is the anaerobic system. The, the mic is probably already, ah, you need to make this more simple. <laughs> so VO2 max, the max amount of oxygen in liters your body can get to the muscles in a minute. So we can compare it with other people. We tend to express it as a number in relation to our body weight. Garmin says, your VO2 max is 50. What it means is that you have 50 liters of oxygen per kilogram of body weight delivered to your muscles every minute. So that if you are lighter, you actually need less. Your top cross country skiers, for example, as a number will be in the nineties. An average person is around about 35. So a top cross country skier, they can get three times more oxygen to their muscles per minute than an average athlete. Uh, well, why is this important? It's because the, the oxygen is used to burn the carbohydrates, the fuel. So we need the two together to get us the energy to get us down the road. A VO2 max session, in my way of interpretation, is, is a threshold session yep. where you're trying to stay using oxygen as the primary source of fuel. When you shorten the rest too much, you need to supplement that and, and lactic, the lactate system comes in uh, and we build up uh, the uh, lactic acid. What we're trying to do with that session is that's a, what I call a lactic tolerance session. So you're trying to go further with large amounts of lactic in the system before breaking down. So that's a different kind of thing. What you're doing, you want to make the engine bigger, which the VO2 is doing, but a lactic tolerance session is equally as valid because if I can actually keep running at a fast pace with a lot of lactate in the body and use the glycolic system as well, as we discussed in the previous podcast, we can use this anaerobic system as well to add more fuel and can cope with large amounts of lactate in the body, then I can keep going faster longer. And again, if you really want to drive this home, I made a more engaging and personal free quick reference guide, checklist, and 30-day 1% better plan to using the VDOT calculator and improving your VO2 max. Check the show notes or video description below to get your copy.